What are the plans of the European Commission for the uh, border tax, the CBAM, Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism? In this chapter, we dive into that. And first we go back to, as I explained in an earlier chapter, the European Union Emission Trading Scheme for ETS sectors. I mentioned we have a balloon and, and the proposal is to deflate the balloon to, to, to bring the amount of emission allowances that are available in line with a minus 61% reduction target. If you want to know more on how that is done precisely, so the technical measures to deflate the balloon, I would like to revert you to a publication by a colleague of mine, Hans van Kleef. You see the URL in the bottom, uh, and it is called a strict, uh, Stricter ETS uh, to Accelerate Emission Cuts. Um, I'm not going to dive into the technicalities at this point, uh, but a, a very good source if you want to know more. I also mentioned deflating the balloon has, uh, puts upward pressure on the price and we already saw that over the past year in anticipation in part of this Green Deal. It's not even binding legislation yet, yet um, but uh, definitely upward pressure on the price. So emission allowances are becoming scarcer, the price is going up, so the, the, the critical thing for companies that still emit CO2 is how to get their hands on the remaining emission allowances. And there are two ways. First of all, they can go to auctions, auctions by member states, and buy emission allowances at an auction, at the going rate. The second route so far under the emission trading scheme is free allocation, because many companies, uh, they compete with, for example, a steel producer in the Netherlands may be competing with steel producers outside the European Union. Uh, and for this reason, free allocation uh, was introduced to basically make sure to, to limit the competitive disadvantage of European producers and prevent them from moving outside the European Union and find pollution havens. Of, uh, around free allocation there has been a lot of controversy for the wrong reasons and for the right reasons. Obviously, ideally, everybody pays the same price and there is no free allocation because that's out of fairness. But on the other hand, you also don't want factories going to pollution havens, so, so there was, this was just the way to, to um, meet um, uh, both, both ends, both, both uh, goals. So how does um, free allocation, why, wh why is it so critical and how does it work? Well, let's assume that a factory produces a good for European consumers, typically big industrial emitters don't supply goods directly to European consumers, but eventually it always ends up in the hands uh, of a European consumer. Um, so for simplicity, I've depicted it like that right here. Let's assume we have a European factory and an American factory outside the European Union. And they both, both produce the same good and try to sell it to the European customer. They can produce it at the same production cost or equivalent production cost, but now, the European Union emitter, the European emitter is under the ETS and would have to pay the price just surpassed 60 euros per ton CO2, uh, uh, a, a very high price for, for uh, its emissions. And suddenly this factory is no longer competitive. The consumer is no longer willing to buy the product. And what actually happens is um, uh, companies move outside the EU. In this case, the American flag is depicted, but it can be anywhere outside the EU, of course. This is just an example. This is exactly what the European Union is trying to avoid and this is why free allocation uh, is applied to, to specific sectors that are open to this risk. Of course, um, if, if you, the, the, as mentioned, the amount of, uh, uh, also the amount of free allocation, the amount of allowances that are allocated for free is decreasing over time. So if you're not doing anything about your emissions or want to produce at the same level or even have growth plans, you'd still have to buy allowances. So it's not like all allowances are for free and you, you don't feel any, any CO2 price. Um, uh, but a lot of it, well, if you, uh, if you get free allocation, uh, the, the effective CO2 price is a lot lower than for many other emitters under the scheme. Obviously, ideally, we want to get rid of this free allocation route. And this is exactly why um, the European Union is proposing to introduce a carbon, uh, a carbon border adjustment mechanism. This 
would basically mean that the European factory now don't, does, it does not have free allocation anymore available, so it pays the full price, but now uh, producers from outside the EU have to pay the equivalent price at the border. Now, how does that work precisely? Um, as mentioned, European emitters buy emission allowances that allow them to emit one ton of CO2 per allowance, and they buy them at an auction. Um, now, if these proposals from the European Commission are implemented, um, producers from outside the EU have to, have to buy CBAM certificates. This is a new type of certificate. It's also not necessarily a balloon. It's just certificates that they, that they can buy against the same price that European producers are paying. And if they do that, they are allowed to export to the European Union and sell goods to European consumers. How does this work precisely? So a very concrete example. Let's assume American factory in 2025 produces steel to the Netherlands or could be any other European country. This is a pan-European mechanism. The American firm would have to buy CBAM certificates from the Dutch Emission Authority or if it would de deliver goods to Belgium, probably the Belgian Emission Authority. Uh, and it pays the go-in price for, for, uh, that uh, European producers pay under the ETS. Now, over the full year, obviously, the, um, the, the American producer knows how, the total volume that it exports to the European Union, and it may also know at the end of the year um, the, the exact emissions that were emitted, because maybe energy efficiency improvements, hopefully, were applied in, the, in, in that year, so the emission intensity can change, and. So at the end of the year, the producer knows the volume and the emissions, the volume of product and the, the emissions associated to us. One year after the initial purchase of these certificates, there is a reconciliation moment with the Dutch Emission Authority where the, um, the um, uh, American producer actually has to hand in the CBAM certificates again and maybe has to buy a little bit more or has a few in excess, they can actually sell them back to the Dutch Emission Authority or just keep them for two years. Um, but um, uh, uh, So there's a reconciliation moment to make sure that every ton of CO2 that is emitted is charged at the right price. And there is a 10-year introduction path associated to this uh, CBAM, to this carbon border adjustment mechanism. So, uh, it is proportional to free allocation. So let's say in a specific chemical sector or industrial sector that is under the ETS, uh, right now they get 80% of their allowances through uh, free allocation and 20% via auctioning. If that is the case, then its non-EU competitor would have to buy um, CBAM certificates for just 20% of its emissions, um, and it would that introduction path would grow to 100% uh, in, in, in 10 years. So only after those 10 years, you, the, the non-EU producer would uh, have to buy CBAM certificates for all its emissions, and the, the European competitor would no longer receive free allowances. And now you may think, wow, but that's, then it takes even 10 years before this takes effect. And, and before this uh, threat of carbon leakage and companies moving outside the EU is no longer there. But uh, it, this is my analysis. Uh, but um, actually, as soon as you introduce this, it will, it will take effect. Because it, what, it, what it effectively does is um, decrease the period uh, substantially uh, over which it is profitable to move your factory to a non-EU country. Because, example, for example, you're a Dutch steel manufacturer, you want to move your production elsewhere. If you only have 10 years before that advantage has evaporated, that is by far not enough to earn your investment back. You, you, so moving away from the EU, as, as soon as this proposal is, becomes binding, uh, is, not, uh, is probably no longer profitable because you have to buy, uh, build completely new supply chains, uh, new personnel. It's uh, highly costly to move and you need a long time horizon with a substantial cost advantage to make it work. Short summary of this chapter. This will be the end of free emission allowances for European industry if the carbon border adjustment mechanism is introduced.
CBAM certificates are different than ETS allowances. They are separate certificates, but they have an equal price. And there is a 10-year introduction path to the CBAM mechanism. Quickly, some questions. Um, how does CO2 border tax cover all products and services? The border tax uh, covers all products uh, and services uh, that are um, covered by the ETS in Europe. So, if, you, uh, if for example, well, steel is a clear example. Uh, steel producers in Europe are covered by the ETS. So, if you're a steel producer in the US and you basically provide the same product to the Dutch, uh, to the European market, then you will have to buy CBAM certificates. So it's, it's um, um, uh, it, it just make sure that there is an international level playing field. Also, if, for example, in this example, um, President Biden in the US introduces a carbon tax of, let's say, 20 euros per ton, then that is subtracted from the bill that is to be paid at the European border. So it's not like 20 plus 60 euros at the Euro European border, no. It, the, the CBAM uh, mechanism corrects for that so that everybody that sells goods in, the, in Europe pays the same CO2 price uh, and vice versa. Uh, does the border adjustment mechanism meet the World Trade Organization rules? The European Commission would argue yes, but I'm sure there will, that there will be debate, especially from non-EU territories. How does it work if the American supplier to the EU has upstream suppliers in the EU? Does it mean that they double pay the CBAM? Uh, no, the, the upstream suppliers uh, in the EU may not be uh, typically upstream producers, maybe uh, 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 small, smaller factories that are not covered by the ETS. If they are um, uh, uh, under the ETS, there may be a correction factor in place. But double, the, the whole idea is not to have double taxation.